struggling to get laid and wondering why, you're not alone. Welcome to a journey of understanding where we'll delve into the heart of the matter, uncover 11 reasons that might be holding you back, and arm yourself with effective strategies to overcome these hurdles. This is not just about scoring, but about building genuine connections, enhancing your self-esteem, and ultimately, becoming a better version of yourself. So, are you ready to turn the tables? Let's dive into the first reason. Number one, you may be trying too hard. It's like being at a party clutching a drink, scanning the room for a potential partner with that desperate, hungry look. It's off-putting, isn't it? That's precisely how it feels when you're trying too hard to get laid. You come off as needy, and that's far from attractive. It's akin to shouting, I'm not worthy, from the rooftops. So how about taking a step back? Relax, enjoy the moment, engage in meaningful conversation, show genuine interest in the person you're talking to, not just the end goal. This isn't a race after all, it's about building connections, finding common ground, and yes, having fun. Because believe it or not, the less you focus on getting laid, the more likely it is to happen. So stop pushing so hard, let things flow naturally, remember, less can often be more. Number two, you might be struggling with how to talk to women. Now this is not about having the perfect line or the most charming anecdote up your sleeve, it's about understanding that good conversation is like a dance, it's a mutual exchange that requires both parties to participate. You see, women appreciate it when you show genuine interest in who they are, not just what they look like. So ask questions, not just any questions, but the ones that show you're really interested in getting to know them. But remember, it's not just about asking questions, it's also about actively listening to their responses. Pay attention to what they're saying, respond, and build upon it. Find common ground. Shared interests or experiences can create a strong connection and make you more appealing. And here's a little secret. Women love a good listener. It shows that you value their thoughts and experiences. So if you're finding it hard to talk to women, shift your focus. Don't stress about impressing them with your words. Instead, impress them with your ability to listen and engage. Because in the end, communication is key. Number three, your flirting game might need some work. Now don't panic. Flirting isn't about cheesy pickup lines or creepy stares. It's about creating a playful atmosphere that makes both of you feel comfortable. One of the most effective flirting techniques is humor. Making her laugh not only shows your wit but also builds a positive association with you. But remember, the goal is to amuse her, not to become her personal comedian. Next up, body language. This is your silent communicator, your unsung hero. It's about the way you stand, your eye contact, the casual touch on the arm. These subtle signals can convey interest and build attraction more than any words can. But here's the catch. Flirting is not a one-size-fits-all game. It's about adapting to the person in front of you, reading their signals and responding accordingly. It's about balance. Too much can come off as desperate, too little as disinterested. Flirting is an art, practice it. Number four, you might not be meeting enough women. It's all a numbers game, really. The more interactions you have, the higher your chances of finding a connection. You might be relying too much on dating apps, and while they can be useful, they have their limitations. It's like trying to catch fish in a pond that's been overfished. It's time to explore new waters. Meeting people offline in the real world can open up a whole new realm of possibilities. Look for social events, join clubs, volunteer, take a class. The world is teeming with opportunities for connection, if only you'd step out of your comfort zone. Remember, each interaction, whether it leads to something or not, is an opportunity to learn and grow. So don't be afraid to venture out and meet new people expand your horizons. Number five, being too agreeable might be your downfall. It's a common misconception that going out of your way to please others will make you more attractive. However, this over-eagerness can come across as desperation, which is far from appealing. It's vital to remember that a healthy relationship is based on equality, not one person being overly subservient to the other. Furthermore, putting women on a pedestal can be just as damaging. While it's great to appreciate and respect women, treating them as if they're flawless goddesses is unrealistic and can create an uncomfortable power dynamic. It also puts undue pressure on them to live up to your impossible standards. Instead, strive for balance. Show kindness and respect but also maintain your own opinions and boundaries. This shows that you value yourself as much as you value them, which is a much more attractive quality. After all, a partner is not a prize to be won, but a person to connect with on an equal footing. Balance is essential. 
Number six, you might not be working on yourself enough. It's easy to fall into a routine, to remain comfortable, but comfort doesn't breed growth. It's essential to continuously strive for self-improvement. This isn't about changing who you are, but about becoming the best version of yourself. This could mean picking up a new hobby, learning a new skill, or even seeking expert advice if you feel stuck. There's no shame in asking for help. In fact, it shows strength and a willingness to change. Remember, the goal here isn't perfection, but progress. Every step you take towards bettering yourself makes you more attractive, not just to potential partners, but to everyone around you. So invest time in yourself. Read that book you've been meaning to, hit the gym, learn to cook a new dish. The more you grow, the more you have to offer. Self-improvement is a journey, not a destination. Number seven, you might not be making the most of your appearance. Now we're not saying you have to look like a Hollywood star, but a little effort goes a long way. Your appearance is your visual resume. It's the first thing people see, and it can set the tone for how others perceive you. Good grooming is the foundation. Maintaining neat hair, clean teeth, and fresh breath is essential. It's about self-respect and showing respect to those around you. Equally important is dressing well. Your clothes don't have to be expensive, but they should be clean, fit well, and suit the occasion. Dressing well shows that you take care of yourself and have a sense of style. Remember, your appearance isn't just about looking good. It's about feeling good, too. When you know you look your best, it boosts your confidence, and that's something others can sense. So take the time to invest in your appearance. Because believe it or not, first impressions do matter. Number eight, you might not be being yourself. It's a simple statement, but it carries a world of meaning. Authenticity is more than a buzzword. It's a cornerstone of genuine connections. When we are true to ourselves, we naturally attract people who appreciate us for who we are, not who we pretend to be. So, are you wearing a mask? Are you playing a role, hoping that it will make you more appealing? If so, it's time to rethink your strategy. Pretending to be someone you're not is not only exhausting but also counterproductive. It sends a message that you're not comfortable in your own skin, which can be a major turnoff. Instead, embrace your uniqueness, celebrate your quirks and idiosyncrasies. They make you who you are and there's no one else quite like you. Yes, it's important to strive for self-improvement but not at the expense of your true self. Because at the end of the day, the most attractive person you can be is yourself, unapologetically and confidently. Remember, people are drawn to authenticity. It's a sign of confidence and self-assuredness. So don't be afraid to be you because you are enough just as you are. Authenticity is attractive. Number 9. Low self-esteem could be holding you back. If you can't see your own worth, how can you expect someone else to? Low self-esteem can make you second-guess yourself, question your actions, and even make you feel unworthy of affection. This can create a barrier, preventing you from forming meaningful connections with others. But remember, everyone has unique qualities that make them special. It's time to acknowledge your strengths and work on your weaknesses. Don't compare yourself with others, it's a race you'll never win. Instead, focus on being the best version of yourself. Start by setting small, achievable goals and celebrate your victories. Surround yourself with positive influences who uplift you. Practice self-compassion. Remember, everyone makes mistakes and it's okay not to be perfect. Boosting your self-esteem won't happen overnight, but each step you take brings you closer to a confident you. And as you grow in confidence, you'll find it easier to connect with others. After all, confidence is attractive. Believe in yourself. Number 10, fear of rejection could be your biggest roadblock. It's a universal fear, yet it can be a significant hindrance when it comes to dating. When you're afraid of rejection, you might hold back from taking risks, leading to missed opportunities. You might avoid asking someone out or even approaching them out of fear they might say no. But here's the thing, rejection is not an end, but a stepping stone. It's an opportunity to learn and grow. Here are a few tips to overcome this fear. First, understand that everyone faces rejection at some point. It's a part of life, not a reflection of your worth. Second, use rejection as a learning experience. What could you do differently next time? Lastly, build up your resilience. Like a muscle, resilience grows stronger with practice. Remember, every no brings you one step closer to a yes. So don't let fear of rejection limit your dating potential. Rejection is part of life, don't let it stop you. Number 11, relying too much on dating apps could be a problem. Now don't get me wrong, dating apps have revolutionized the way we meet people. 
They've made it easier to connect with others from all walks of life, and they can be a great tool if used correctly. However, there's a downside. These apps can create a sort of artificial environment where it's easy to get caught up in the game of swiping and matching, rather than focusing on building genuine connections. This can lead to a cycle of temporary highs and lows, without ever really getting to know someone on a deeper level. Instead, consider meeting people offline. There's something about face-to-face -face interaction that can't be replicated through a screen. It allows for more authentic connections where you can read body language, hear someone's voice, and see their reactions. It also opens up a world of opportunities to meet people in different settings and circumstances. This isn't to say you should abandon dating apps altogether, but rather don't let them become your only avenue for meeting potential partners. Real-life connections can be more meaningful. Finally, you might be coming across as low status. This isn't about the size of your bank account or the brand of your shoes. It's about how you carry yourself, how you behave, and how you engage with the world around you. Your behavior and body language can speak volumes, conveying a sense of high or low status. If you're constantly seeking validation or approval, often acting defensive or submissive, you're displaying low status behaviors. On the contrary, high status individuals are confident, assertive, and comfortable in their own skin. They don't need external validation because they know their worth. So how can you exude this high status vibe? Start by embodying confidence. Stand tall, maintain eye contact and speak clearly. Show assertiveness by expressing your thoughts and feelings honestly without fear of judgment. Remember it's about balance. You don't want to come off as arrogant or domineering. Remember status is perceived, not given. The way you carry yourself and interact with others can influence how they perceive your status. So take control of your image and start displaying high status behaviors today. Status is perceived, not given. So, these were the 11 reasons you might not be getting laid. From trying too hard and not knowing how to converse with women, to fear of rejection and relying too heavily on dating apps. Remember, it's not about the act of getting laid itself, but about building authentic connections, improving yourself, and maximizing your appeal. Confidence, authenticity, and assertiveness are key. Avoid low-status behaviors and bravado, instead be you, and work on enhancing your conversation skills, and your flirting techniques. Remember, it's about self-improvement and authentic connections. Good luck. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing, liking, and sharing it with a friend who could benefit. Thanks for watching.